This is a Canon 7S rangefinder, aka the cheap Leica, and I think it's the best beginner 35 millimeter film camera to start with, which is why I bought one. And while it's a new camera to me, it's definitely not a new camera. They stopped manufacturing these in the late 1950s. So it is about a 57 year old camera in my hands, but it's still new to me. And I have to admit, I've only had it for a little while and I love it. Here's why. If you've done any research into this category, you have probably stumbled upon the Leicas, whether it's a Leica 3, 4, 5, 6, or 7, and then you saw the price tags. What I found in my research is that this is basically the Japanese version of the Leica that they only made for a couple years. So there's not even that many out there, but you can still get them for the hundreds of dollars versus the thousands of dollars for a Leica alternative. This one as a 7S has a working light meter and I will talk about that in a second, but this is really a review and an overview for how to use these types of cameras for the people that might be interested in starting with film photography because I have to admit, film photography is really freaking fun. Unlike cameras today, which likely won't last 50 plus years, these cameras are made without any electronics other than the light meter inside, which you don't even need, but it's helpful to have, but it's fully mechanical. So everything works without power, without battery, and it can withstand the test of time, which you can't totally say about a lot of cameras today. As much as I wanted to pull the trigger on a Leica, even an older Leica, like a Leica 3 or 5, I was still looking about $4,000 without even buying the lens. This camera, with lens, 50 millimeter lens, I got on eBay for about $700 combined. That's a big deal for someone who just wants to dabble in this hobby before fully committing because A, I've got no experience with film photography whatsoever. B, if I had spent about $8,000 on a camera and a lens, I'd be a lot less likely to want to take it out on random adventures that I've been doing with this camera in order to get some practice with it. So if you're in a similar situation, I think it's worth pulling a trigger on a camera like this because it's so heavy and because it's so strong, I feel confident throwing it into the bottom of my backpack or in a quick carry-on without having a full-on protection like I would with a normal digital DSLR type cameras. I've only had it for a few weeks. I've taken it on a boat. I've taken it hiking. I've taken it on a lot of walks. I probably wouldn't have taken it all of those places had I spent 6,000 plus. So if you have purchased a camera like this, I'm going to go over the features, how it works, how I've used it, and what I'm still struggling with. So if you've got any tips for me, I would love to hear them. I'm learning as I go, and I have to admit, I've learned so much in just the first month of having this camera that I can only imagine what might happen if I continue on this pace for the next couple months, which is a big reason I'm making this video to hold me accountable and also see if anyone else out there is interested in going on a journey like this because I think it's a journey worth going on. So this is the front of the camera. This is the viewfinder. This is where the light meter picks up its readings. And this is for a flash that I'm not even gonna touch on trying to use. At the top, this is the winder. Once you have the film in, you take a photo, pull it back, close it, moves it on forward. This is your shutter button. Push it down, takes a photo, pretty simple. In here, let's see if I can get a better shot. When that little dot's pointed on the red, it prevents you from being able to take a photo. When it's pointed at the A, it allows you to take a normal photo. When you're ready to finish your roll and take the film out, flip this over to R for the rewind section. And what we'll do is go over here, and this is how you rewind the film. Manually like that, you'll see this red dot spinning in circles until you're all the way done. Then you close that back down. Here we've got your shutter speeds. As you can see, it is fully mechanical when you move this dot you move these notches these move along with it the thing that took me a little while to understand is here you've got different light meter settings so you've got l and h l is for daylight and h is for indoors um, i don't know the equivalent i look at it as orange i've read a lot that says it's white and red but you'll see that the equivalent of these white and red match up down here and that gives you what your aperture settings should be. So as you point it in different directions or you change your settings here, you'll notice that the light meter has an impact. And where the light meter lines up is where you would adjust your aperture settings manually on the lens. So right now I've got a 50 millimeter lens on here. You have options for 85 to 100, 135, 
and back down to 35. This just adjusts for the type of lens you are using. On this side, this tells you if your light meter is off, you can turn it on. And you can also turn it here to check your battery to see if it's working. So from off to on, you can see how it maneuvers. That way you know that it's working. Get a semi-decent shot of the viewfinder. This is what you look through manually. You've got no screen because, again, this is old school. Down here, you've got your lock. When you spin this, it unlocks here, and that's where you pop out to replace the film. I can't do that now because I just have a fresh roll in there. So we'll close that back up. And that's your camera. The most difficult things to kind of learn and adjust to and get used to is dealing with the lens. You'll notice you've got your aperture settings here. It's all manual. Change them like here. So just spin it back and forth. And then you've got your distance settings to help you with your focus. It's currently in lock mode, which helps you if you're like having it in your backpack so it's not moving. You push that down and then you can rotate it. And as you can see, you've got the meters on the bottom, the feet on the top. And as you spin that, you've got everything from infinity to one meter. Knowing the accuracy of these, as they are several decades old, you kind of have to just go out, take some photos, write down photo five was one foot away, photo 10 was 16 feet away test these settings to make sure they work because I've gone out and tried to take a bunch of photos of my kids and of the city and of the mountains and I'm at about a 30% success rate on how good these photos are and by that I just mean like is what I was trying to shoot in focus or not. Some of that is trial and error and learning and some of that is the inaccuracy of a very old camera combined with an old lens. I've struggled with finding new lenses for this. That's another thing we'll get into on a different video, but finding matching lenses for this is difficult, even though this tr traditional Leica M screw mount is different than the popular Leica mounts. So there are some out there. There's just less of the updated versions. So, so far I've only been able to have success buying accessories on eBay. There's some good stores I found in Japan specifically, and I was actually shocked with how fast the delivery came. Being, you know, in a, in a COVID world with uh, shipping delays, I was very impressed with how quickly I got them. So I've got a new lens on the way. I will update some of those photos. We'll close out this video with some of the shots that I have taken so far, some that are good, some that are bad. But so far, I have to admit, I'm in love with black and white photography and experimenting with the different types of films. And again, that's another reason this is more of an art than a science is that First, you have to figure out your camera settings, then you gotta figure out your lens settings, then you gotta figure out the types of films you're using, and each one of those adds an extra special level of variables that can be excruciatingly annoying or a lot of fun because you're never gonna really be able to take the same photo twice, which is basically so counterintuitive to everything with digital photography that it makes it extremely exciting. Let me know what you think of this video. Let me know if you have any experience with film photography. And if you are in the market to get your first camera, I recommend a Canon 7S or something in the Canon 7 family. But I'd love to hear your thoughts and feedback. Subscribe to this channel if you haven't already. Drop me a comment and let me know if you want more videos that involve this camera and some of the new lenses I plan on getting and some of the trial and error mistakes that I've been learning along the way. I appreciate you guys. We'll see you guys on the next video. Thank you.